So good day to Dr. Ong. Today we're going to talk about the bismuth oxyhalide nanomaterials for the photocatalytic CO2 reduction. So the carbon dioxide emission has been increasing tremendously throughout the years and has caused many problems due to their greenhouse effect. The semiconductor-based photocatalytic CO2 reduction is considered as the most promising approach as they will convert this carbon dioxide into valuable energy fuels by harnessing the unlimited sunlight. The bismuth oxyhalide is the ideal catalyst for this process due to their high visible light response, good activity as well as stability. In a typical photoreduction process, upon the absorption of visible light, the electrons will be excited from valence band to the conduction band, and the holes are generated in the valence band. These holes will oxidize the water into oxygen and hydrogen ions. Then these hydrogen ions together with the electron will reduce the carbon dioxide to energy fields like carbon monoxide, methane and so on. However, one of the drawbacks for this process is the rapid recombination of the electron and holes, which will severely limit the efficiency of CO2 reduction. Hence, different strategies have been developed to overcome this problem and will be discussed in the later section. Christmas tree strategy is used to modify the band edge of PLX as their production band minimum mainly consists of 6p orbitals. Increasing the business content produces more densely dispersed energy band that facilitate the transfer and separation of charge carrier. CO2 become more strongly absorbed on basis of switch PLX, which promote the activation of the molecule and subsequent transformation of intermediate and product. Besides, oxygen vacancy can be created to moderate the electronic property of PLX to expand the light absorption range. Among all halogens, PIO-BR contain the highest oxygen vacancies. Furthermore, Oxygen vacancy or valence band minimum accelerate the photo generation of carriers and enhance their separation efficiency. Oxygen vacancy are electron rich and able to facilitate the absorption and activation of CO2 on the catalyst surface too. For doping strategy, uh, in BIOCL, and doping has increased the absorption age and also narrowed down the band gap. Platinum doping enhances the transportation and separation of photo generated charges, also inhibits the recombination of them. Zero dimension carbonized polymer dots enhance the light absorption capability, electron transfer and separation, CO2 molecule absorption and desorption of lead BIOBR. For the core catalyst strategy, BIOI was loaded by gold and magnesium oxide, which improved the mobility and separation efficiency of charge carriers. Electrons and holes migrated to the gold and magnesium layer prevented the recombination of them. In another case, uh, BIOBR was loaded by graphite nitrile and also small size AU. Small size AU acts as the center of surface plasmon resonance, which increases the light absorption capability of the catalyst. For Z scheme heterojunction, the I negative and I3 negative pairs will act as the electron transfer mediator, where the I negative ions will be oxidized to I3 negative ions by the holes on the valence band of BI4 over I2. And at the same time, these I3 negative ions will be reduced back to I negative by the electron on the conduction band of graphene carbon nitride. It will form a Z movement, hence it is known as the Z scheme heterojunction. This will enhance the separation efficiency of the charge carrier at these two regions respectively. Moreover, for the phaser engineering, the BIOI nanosheet with exposed 001 phaser has higher carbon dioxide reduction activity. This is because the internal electric field is perpendicular to the BIOI001 nanosheet. Hence, the charge separation and migration is more favorable due to the relatively shorter diffusion distance of this charge carrier. The BIOI001 also has higher conduction band, which will also contribute to the higher carbon dioxide reduction activity. Now, let's move on to the 2D material. Most of the photocatalysts are in 2D. 2D material has an atomic thickness which is able to shorten the diffusion pathway of charge carrier to the exposure surface for buffets, as well as provide an abundant herbicide to expose surface to expansions of surface area. Next, ultratin thickness strategy. By utilizing ultratin thickness strategy on photocatalyst, it can provide larger specific surface area and hence provide more active site for CO2 photo reductions. Besides that, it can give charge transfer. As a result, it can prevent the recombination of water generated in the electron hole pairs. Other than that, it can selectively produce carbon monoxide from CO2 reduction. And lastly, it can provide more negative conduction band, which is able to increase the photocatalytic activity. 
This table summarizes some of the work conducted by other researchers on modification of photon catalyst to defect engineering, hybridization engineering, phaser engineering, and morphology control. For challenges and future outlooks, future research should develop BLX photon catalysts that are stable and highly selective to C2 fields, which often have higher market value. Furthermore, NOAA computational approach for the mechanistic study and kinetic model for CO2 photon reduction, which is independent of photoreactor geometry and size, should be performed too. Engineering stable BLX nanomaterial and reaction system that can modulate the light corrosion and establishing reproducible and scalable synthesis of BLX photon catalysts are important for industrial applications. Lastly, incorporation of Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and big data analytics should be conducted to realize a fully automated production of PLX photocatalysts. That's all for this presentation. Thank you for listening.